So I got a really interesting topic for tonight. This is one that I came up with last night. I am laying in bed and thinking, oh, what am I going to talk about? Thank you, sir. And I thought, all right, sometimes I like to talk about the challenge of the week, the internal challenge is to do something fun every day. And I was like, well, I can't just talk about how to have fun. That's a little bit weird and childish. But how does that relate to our practice? And how does that relate to meditation and mindfulness? And there's this concept called Wu Wei. And Wu Wei is basically this, this, it's not necessarily a state, but it's close to a state in the same thing, in the same way that Mu Xin is a state of mind that means no mind. Wu Wei is like uh, inactive activity or effortless effort or striving without striving. And a simple way to think of this is, let's say that you're in class and like in the last class, you guys are in jujitsu, you're grappling with each other and you're trying very hard, but you're not trying only in order to win. Because if you can only try hard in order to win, then when you lose, what happens? Anybody? You feel defeated. You don't like it. And this has a tendency to make you tense and rigid, which is the opposite of what you want. So what you want is to be able to put forth a lot of effort without having to have the win. So this is something that really is beneficial for the rest of life. When we can really pour ourselves into something without having to have a specific outcome. This is what non-attachment is all about. I don't have to be attached to winning or to the certain outcome. I can just give and pour myself into it. And when you're able to do that, things become fun, right? So in class, you can be grappling to win and then you lose and it's not fun. Or you can be grappling to just move and play with the energy and you're still really trying hard but then when your partner gets you with something you go oh that was great a kid asked me in the last class he said sifu what if i am grappling with somebody and their technique is better than me better than my technique and they're beating me what should i do in that situation and I said, first of all, that is always going to happen. It's going to happen in martial arts. It's going to happen with everything in life. There will never be a time where you are just the best. And even if on, a, on the tiniest chance that that happens, you literally become the best in the world at something, how long is that really going to last? Like this long. Somebody else is going to beat you. Somebody else is going to be better at, at that than you somehow at some, at some point. So... We don't want to be attached to it. We don't even want to really worry about getting there in the first place. Of course, we might take actions that actually do end up making us the best in the world at something or the best in class at something, but that's very unrealistic and not really something that we want to be attached to. Now, a slight shift, you can strive and still really work hard, but not need to get to that point, right? So my answer to him in that, in that uh, instance was if your partner's got better technique than you, what do you do? You learn from them. This is exactly the kind of thing that somebody would do if they weren't attached to winning. When you're attached to winning, that stops you from being able to learn. It stops you from being able to flow. It stops you from being able to have fun. You're stuck. Winning means I'm stuck or I win or I lose and I hate it. Uh, but when you're learning, this is like I'm open to whatever is happening. My partner catches me with this choke and I go, oh, that was awesome. i got to learn how to do that. Maybe I ask them to do it to me again and they'll get me again. And I'm like, yes, I got to keep, I got to keep getting it. So this little attitude shift is imperative in practicing martial arts and in life because it allows us to be in the present. Think of it in meditation. If you're meditating only because you have to win at meditation. And that sounds ridiculous, but it really is the way that a lot of people go about it. It's like, I'm either having a great meditation and I'm totally clear, I have no thoughts, or I'm failing. I'm not winning, I'm losing at meditation. Well, then your meditation is not enjoyable. And I'm not saying, please, do not sit there in meditation and be just like laughing because it's gonna be disruptive to other people and to your own meditation. You're not like, 
bouncing off the walls, giddy with excitement from your meditation, but it's okay. It's okay if you have a thought. It's okay if your mind wanders. It's okay if you're just kind of having a not so great meditation. You just let that go and come back to the present. So I'm still pouring myself into it, but the attachment or the need for it to go a certain way isn't there. And that frees us up to flow. So Wu Wei is all about flow. And when we're having fun, things can flow. And when we are flowing, things can be fun. So it's a very different way of approaching martial arts and life from the way that most people do. And I'll say, our society and our world really are kind of set up and pushing us in the direction of being in competition. And I have to win, right? I have to be the best. I have to get the better car. I have to beat this other person out for this job. I have to do this, I have to do this. And it's just not going to go the way that you want it to go. Life doesn't go exactly the way that we want it to because it's life, right? So when we can flow with it, then this gives us opportunities to learn and to improve. So as I said before, Wu Wei, the, the uh, first symbol is actually the same. The first kanji is the same as Mu Shin. So this Mu and Wu is the same thing. And it means basically absence of, or, or nothing, or, or none of this. Shin, it directly translates to heart, but it also means mind or spirit. And a lot of people see this and they're like, why do you have a wall scroll that says no heart or no, no spirit? You want us to just have like, to just be depressed or, or like hate class? No, it's no mind, which means you are so focused or you have no distractions. This is the kind of mindset that we're trying to have in class, right? Wu Wei is very similar. It's uh, no effort, which then people think like, well, I'm just not supposed to try hard. No, it's, it's effortless effort. It is just striving without striving. And so when we can get that in practice, it should start to show up in everyday life as well. And you'll see that the uh, symbol for Wei, kind of similar to Shin, but a little bit more complicated because it's a little bit more complicated to have that effort and to be able to let go of it. Uh, I want to read this quick thing from this book. If you have not read it yet, this is a wonderful book on martial arts, but general concepts uh, that also are very useful in life. So Zen in the martial arts, this is actually the first book that we have people read in the dojo for a test. So this is written by Joe Himes, who is a student of many different great martial artists, including Bruce Lee, and he writes about his different experiences with different teachers. So this chapter is called Effortless Effort. A good martial artist should be able to go from any position or stance and strike his opponent, which I hate using that word opponent, but he uses it, so I'm not going to censor him, without telegraphing his intention. This technique, sometimes called sparking, can be achieved only in the absence of previous conscious thought. So what he's trying to say is, you're not sitting there thinking, I'm going to get you with a punch, because all that gets in the way it's going to stop you from being able to instantaneously flow, right? Instead, the thought and the action must be simultaneous. So as soon as that intention happens, the strike happens. During one of my Wing Chun sessions with Jim Lau, Jim stood facing me with a baseball mitt in his hand and asked me to hit it before he could move his hand. So before martial arts became as, as popular as it is now, we didn't have mitts like this. They'd usually actually be using stuff like baseball mitts or pillows. So each time I threw a punch, he sensed my intention and moved the mitts. Although I had begun the exercise with a relaxed body and mind, I was soon tense and strained, frustrated by the fact that he was able to anticipate my actions. Even when he finally held the glove almost still, I was unable to land a punch. Relax, he said. Stop straining. The less effort, the faster and more powerful you will be. We continued the exercise until I was exhausted and therefore totally relaxed. Finally, not caring whether I hit the target or not, I saw an opportunity and snapped my fist. My hand landed on the mitt with a satisfying thud. Perfect, Jim shouted. At last, you sparked properly. And do you know why? 
your mind and body were relaxed. You stopped caring whether you hit or not. It is the caring or desire which stands in the way of effortless effort. So I backed off and faced him again, determined to repeat the achievement, but I failed. You're trying too hard, Jim said patiently. Stop caring. But what good is it to me to be able to hit it when I don't care about it? When I want to, I can't. You must stop caring about doing it and just do it effortlessly and naturally as snow falls from a tree or water bubbles up from a spring. After you have practiced something for a long time, it becomes second nature. Don't be concerned with making contact with the mitt. Just throw your hand out without conscious effort. Let it happen. This is how the, the method and the, the kind of journey of practice works in martial arts and lots of other things. We, we really pay attention to the details as we're training. We really try hard to get the training right. But in the moment of action, when it actually has to happen, we have to stop caring about it and trying to get it right because it's that that slows us down and gets in the way. So it was many weeks later before I duplicated my original feat. And again, it happened when I had almost given up and no longer cared. Aha, shouted Jim. That time you didn't care and it happened. At last, you're beginning to understand the secret. But if I had told it to you, you would never have understood. The knowledge had to come from inside. So I'm sorry, you guys. You're never going to get it because I told you about it. I know it, but I don't know it, I said truthfully. Then I will put it into words for you, he replied. Relaxation and concentration go hand in hand, but too much concentration defeats itself. If you are truly relaxed and allow the body and unconscious to do their share, instead of working the conscious mind over time, concentration can become effortless effort. And this is what should happen in meditation as well. If we're trying to force it, we're trying to strain it. It's not going to happen. It's when we relax and just let our mind flow and be in the present that it will happen. That's well and good for you to say, I answered. But when a fist is about to bury itself in my midriff or knows it's not easy to be uncaring. Jim's comment to that was, don't care so much. And I'll tell you, when you've gotten hit enough times, you'll stop caring so much if you get hit or not. Later that week, when I was playing tennis... I fixed on a phenomenon I had noticed before. Very often when I serve, when, my, when a serve was long or a trifle out, I returned it perfectly. I realized that when the serve was out of the court, there was no need for me to make a good shot. So I casually hit the ball uh, without thought or care and generally made a first rate return. Now I knew what Jim meant. What, Jim meant. what stands in the way of effortless effort is caring or a conscious attempt to do well. During my next few tennis lessons, I made up my mind to stop training and just accept each lesson as a game. It was unimportant whether I was good or not. When I stopped straining, it happened. I had made the breakthrough. I then transformed the same principle to my work. Although faced with what seems to be an impossible schedule, I said to myself, to hell with it, I'll just do it. My concentration was focused, but I was relaxed physically and mentally. I did what had to be done in less time and with less effort than I would have thought possible. By caring less and not worrying about the job at hand, I was free to get on with it. The effort was effortless. Uh, and there's a couple of great quotes here to finish this. So the first one is from Chuang Tzu who is a, a great Taoist teacher, and we have his book in the lobby as well. He says, the mind of a perfect man is like a mirror. It grasps nothing. It expects nothing. It reflects, but does not hold. Therefore, the perfect man can act without effort. And the next one is from Bruce Lee. The less effort, the faster and more powerful you will be. So I'll finish by talking about this concept in another way that might make a little bit more sense to you. If you have ever spent time with a cat, so some of you have cats or have hung out with cats. And this, one of my Tai Chi students said this once, and I thought this is one of the most perfect analogies for our practice. This student said, Tai Chi, practicing Tai Chi, and you can translate this to meditation and, and other martial arts or just anything in, in life that is kind of similar to this. So Tai Chi is like trying to pet a cat. The more you try to chase the cat around, the more it escapes from you. 
right? You try to hold on to the cat and it's like, no, and it just squirms out, right? The more you try to go after the cat, the more it runs away. But if you just sit there, you literally just sit in a chair, the cat is like wandering around and eventually it's gonna come to you. This cat will just walk over and sit in your lap. And meditation is the same way. The more you try to chase after it, the more it eludes you, it escapes you. But if you just sit there and let it happen, it will, it will come to you and it will be effortless. And somebody else, another modern day philosopher who said it in a similar way, Tommy Boy, if you've seen this movie, he's talking about making a sail. And he's like, I have this sail in my hand and it's like a little bird and I love it and I pet it and I hold it so tight that I squish it and I kill it. And this is what we do in, in practice and in life. There's something that we care so much about. And of course, our you know, society and, and our minds want to tell us, well, you should really care and you should really try and you should. But all of that effort causes us to, in that moment, kill and squish the very thing that we care so much about. So don't do that with your cat. Let the cat come to you and just... Gently pet it, and then when it's done, it's going to walk away, and you don't try to hold on to it. Uh, I, had, I had a cat. My brother and I lived together for a couple of years when I first opened the dojo. This was 12 years ago, and we got a cat. We got this cat who was kind of skittish. He was a rescue cat, and he was like the smallest cat, but he had a great kind of energy about him. I, I went to a foster home to see him and he was in there with all these other animals. There were birds and dogs and they'd all kind of like be messing with each other and he'd be there like around the food. And I saw this big dog come over to him like it was going to eat the food and he just like swatted the dog away. And I was like, that's the cat that I want. And this is the kind of attitude this cat had, right? So Sometimes he would come and sit in our laps and we'd go to pet him and he would start to go nuts if you pet him for too long. And I think actually he would get like static electricity built up. He just didn't like getting pet for that long. So you'd pet him and he'd be, and he'd be like nice and calm and then he'd get a little antsy and then he'd just bite you. <laughs> and you got to be able to feel this. Like when is it time to just let go? When am I trying to hold on too tight? So this is going to happen with so many things in life, with your martial arts and meditation practice, with relationships, with, with things that you really feel like you have to have and you want so badly. It is that very desire and that need to hold on to it that's going to cause it to not go well. So on some level, this is very simply what meditation is. Right? We recognize our thoughts, we recognize our desires, we recognize our attachments, and we practice letting go of them. You are almost for sure not going to sit and have a perfect meditation with no thoughts. Right? You're going to have some kind of a thought, and your initial reaction is going to be, i got to force this thought away. Right? Or you'll get attached to the thought because your brain is getting lazy or bored of meditation. You're going to hold on to this thought and it's going to be like, yes, I need to be thinking about this right now. Whatever that is, you can let it go, whether it's the feel to push it away or the need to hold on to it, right? Wu Wei, effortless effort, just let it flow. So you can play with meditation in this way the thought comes up instead of trying to force anything just play with it right oh there's a thought coming that's funny my brain's trying to think right now my ego is trying to get in the way i can just play with this and let it go and this has a give and take and an ebb and flow and this is just like grappling with somebody or doing push hands and tai chi it should have this effortless effort this flow so we're going to sit. We're going to sit for about 15 minutes or so. And when you're sitting, you don't want your physical posture to be very rigid. You want to be just relaxed. And you don't want your mental posture to be rigid, right? 
feel the thoughts and let them go. If it is a truly important thought, something that you have to deal with, it'll come back to you probably again in meditation, but for sure at the end of meditation, it'll come back to you. And then since you'll be more relaxed and calm and in a state of uh, emptiness, you will be more free to actually deal with it in the best possible way, rather than being stuck and resisting. Sit comfortably. So some basics for posture. You want to be sitting even with or, sorry, you want your knees to be even with or below your hips. So you can sit in seiza or cross-legged like this. Uh, you can try sitting like this or like this, either one. If you want to sit here, you can turn your, your bag up. So you guys that are sitting in seiza on your bag, I would actually suggest that it's a little bit more comfortable if you turn it up on its side. Uh, if you're really comfortable, you don't have to do that. But if you turn it like this, then it will be a little bit higher and a little bit easier. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay. So the point is your knees are not sticking up too high because that is going to make your legs fall asleep in meditation. So cross-legged, if you can do it comfortably like Hudson, also great. Uh, your hands are going to be here at your hips. They can be together or they can be separate, but they shouldn't be sliding down because you see this is messing up my posture. So I try to keep this good posture like so with the shoulders rolled back and relaxed. And multiple, close eyes. So your spine is straight and your eyes are slightly upturned. You're not trying to cross your eyes, just in a relaxed way, let your eyes naturally raise up a little bit. If you're struggling to find the position for your eyes, you can actually take your finger and touch the center of your forehead. And then you can put your hand back and just feel that spot on your forehead. You're not actually trying. You're not, you're not uh, attached to that spot by staring at it. But when you just feel that spot on your forehead, your eyes will naturally raise up a little bit. And that's all you're looking for, that relaxed raising up of the eyes. And from here, we'll do a couple of deep breaths together. We'll start with all the breath out. <sighs> Breathe in through the nose. Hold it for a few seconds at the top and then breathe out. In. Hold. Out. Try to breathe in from the belly. Hold. Out. Two more breaths in. Hold. Out. Last breath in. Hold. Out, finish with a double exhale. Now just let your breath come in and let your breath go out. Feel your breath. So you're no longer trying to breathe in a certain way. You're just aware of the feeling, the breath coming in going out. And when your mind wanders, bring it gently back to the breath. Not trying to force anything, just make it a gentle and inviting, satisfying feeling. When you recognize that you were thinking, that's a good thing that you recognized it. So 
celebrate by going back to the breath and let that be an enjoyable experience. And then you're just playing with the breath, not trying to force it, just feel it. Mm. Same thing with your mind. You're just playing with those thoughts, just touching on them and letting them go. And keep doing that throughout your meditation. Mm. 